<laughs> I could sing it. I could sing it. Donald Trump song. He has one pulled up here. Yeah. Oh, there is. Oh, I knew it. There had to be one. Thank you, Internet. What a beautiful thing it is. Roll tape seasons. Donald D. Trump, I'll build a wall and put Hispanics in the dump. Boom, pa, doom, pa, Donald D. D. If you're retarded, you listen to me. What will you do with the daughter you phone? Put that aside with a very small loan. What Just will we do on. when the country turns dumb? Just say you want them to heat. Rape your bums. He'll take you by the balls and sing Boom, pa, doom, pa, Donald D. Trump. Fight at his rallies because it is fun. Boom, pa, doom, pa, Donald D. Clump. Take it out the rear if you vote for Trump. Ah, I love it. I love it. Ah, yeah, someone, someone beat us to it. Yeah, not surprising. Someone beat us to it. All right. From MSN.com, from the New York Times, Peter Baker, Bolton says House should have investigated Trump for impeachable actions beyond Ukraine. And this is a story I've been holding off on covering because I don't want to get to Trump drama every day. Because, But this story, I think, it's coming to a head. This is a really exciting time. John R. Bolton, the former National Security Advisor, says in his new book that the House in its impeachment inquiry should have investigated President Trump not just for pressuring Ukraine to incriminate his domestic foes, but for a variety of instances when he sought to intervene in law enforcement matters for political reasons. Which sounds like Trump, right? But uh, let, let's go back to this Ukraine thing. If you recall, this was the Democrats' attempt to impeach Trump. And they, of course, they, they got the vote to impeach, which is to uh, create the hearing, not to convict him, which is the vote that happens under the impeachment trial that then happens in the Senate. And I, I, this is a propaganda stunt for the Democrats. I don't think they really actually wanted to impeach him. Right. And even before that, they, they were looking, they, they were throwing stuff at the wall. Right. A lot of Democrats in Congress. Well, we could impeach Trump for this. We could impeach him for that. And for some reason, they, they went with this Ukraine thing. I mean, why? It resonated with voters because it was, oh, they're going after Biden. Biden's our boy. He was Obama's vice president. And Obama, and Obama was our savior. So, well, still is, right? Obama's God to the Democrats. So Biden is, is at least an angel. How dare Trump use the Ukrainian government? You know, so that, you know it was, they looked at polling. You know, that's how they chose the issue to go after him on impeachment for. They didn't go after him for all of the other illegal things that would have impeached them or you know, uh, incriminated them in the minds of the American public that they're both guilty for that they support. Like you know, all the various unconstitutional financial things, the ripoffs, the military power, the, uh, the, the police state, the surveillance state, the power of government as a whole. Like these are, there are things that they've, they, they, they would all be, uh, they've all done in violation of the constitution that certainly constitute high crimes or misdemeanors by any objective standard, especially if Trump's phone call, I mean, you go, really? Anybody looking at it goes, this is all political posture, which is why, you know, I'm generally pretty careful to avoid getting bogged down with the palace intrigue. Mr. Bolton describes several episodes where the president expressed willingness to halt criminal investigations, quote, to, in effect, give personal favors to dictators he liked, citing cases involving major firms in China and Turkey, quote, the pattern looked like obstruction of justice as a way of life, which we couldn't accept, Mr. Bolton Wright, adding that he reported his concerns to Attorney General William P. Barr. The book, The Room Where It Happened, was obtained by the New York Times in advance of its scheduled publication next Tuesday and has already become a, a political lightning rod in the thick of an election campaign and a number one bestseller on Amazon.com even before it hits the bookstores. The Justice Department filed a last-minute lawsuit against Mr. Bolton this week, seeking to stop publication, even as Mr. Trump's critics complained that Mr. Bolton should have come forward during impeachment proceedings 
rather than save his account for a two million dollar book contract wow cashing out well that might explain this but you have to wonder is mr bolton worried about his personal security at this point how many very powerful people did he just throw under a bus so the last minute lawsuit i have to wonder about this they knew there was going to be a Streisand effect on it, right? They had to have known that this that this is going to backfire, right? That they're not going to. This is going to just make more people want to read it. Could they could they stop the paperback from getting out? Could they, you know, like it, it's already out apparently on Amazon. You can order this. So why would they do that? Either they're setting up. The Trump strategy. So Trump could be, I think he could be going one of two ways with this, right? That this is an attempt to discredit the book so that when they pursue legal action against Bolton later personally, they say, well, we we did do something we could have as opposed to, you know, we let it go. But really, it's it's too late. Streisand effect is in effect. While other books by journalists, lower level former aides, and even an anonymous senior official have revealed much about the Trump White House, Mr. Bolton's volume is the first tell-all memoir by such a high-ranking official who participated in major foreign policy events and has a lifetime of conservative credentials. It is a withering portrait of a president ignorant of even basic facts about the world, susceptible to transparent flattery by authoritarian leaders manipulating him, and prone to false statements, foul-mouthed eruptions, and snap decisions that AIDS tried to manage or reverse. Sounds like a compelling and accurate condemning picture. Here's how Trump would try to spin it, I think. And this is, I mean, this is what, how I would, if, 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 I, if I had to, you know, directly counter this in some way, and these specific accusations about intervention or in, inappropriate handling of foreign affairs and intervention in uh, criminal cases, I, I would say, well, <laughs> presidents have been doing this for all of American history. I'm just being a little more open and honest about it. You want me to stop? Let's stop the practice and address it. Fine, let's make legal safeguards. But you can't come after me for using language that describes openly what Americans have, American presidents have been doing semi-openly, where they just hide their responsibility for it rhetorically for you know all of modern American history. Uh, and in that sense, I, you know, I'm, it's kind of like maybe it's a good thing. You know, I, I'm maybe I'm seeing a silver lining here that, well, hey, we elected a reality star TV, uh, a reality TV star for president. He's going to be ignorant about some things and he's going to go in with, well, this is how it's done. Right. How is how we're doing it. I mean, as, uh, people have done it before. Right. I'm just this is my version of it. Oh, that's illegal. Well, I'm only doing the same, my version of what everybody else. I'm really not crossing any other legal line. And on the whole, you know, I want to be optimistic here, you know, in terms of what Trump represents. You know, while there is this spasm of nationalism and, and hatred and division around Trump, does, does he really represent a bucking of the trend of the American government still, despite World War II and Vietnam? and and the global war on terror, I mean, it's still this is a decline in the viciousness and violence of the U.S. government racket as a whole, the federal government specifically. I don't think Trump represents a huge departure from that. In some ways, there's some steps backwards. You know, he's this 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 point of rhyming in American history and in the, in the spiral uh, ascension uh, of human progress. Is it a meaningful dip? I, I don't know. Uh, is it launching us on a better trajectory? Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm covering this story. That's why I think it's exciting to see what change is going to come about from this. What examination of presidential powers is going to happen in the national conversation? What reform might come from this? What lessons might we, I mean, of course, we can learn all the lessons that we want for those of us who really want to learn and are paying attention, but what lessons will be unavoidably baked into the American paradigm and consciousness as a result of this next episode, which I think is going to be a defining part of American history in this year's story. It's going to be, hey, there was the coronavirus, 
then there was George Floyd, then there was the John Bolton book. Yeah, like it's it, it might be that significant as part of the narrative of, of this year in American history. Mr. Trump did not seem to know, for example, that Britain is a nuclear power and asked if Finland is part of Russia, Mr. Bolton writes. He came close. And like, that's not condemning. Most Americans are going to relate to that, right? Like, <laughs> being ignorant about foreign affairs, typical. Like, did, did did the American people in vetting Trump for president go, do you really know enough about foreign affairs? No, they said, do you have the right attitude that represents us? Do you make me like you? And he did. And he made them like him as the, the alpha male that was the leader that, that they thought they needed and wanted. During Mr. Trump's 2018 meeting with North Korea's leader, according to the book, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo slipped Mr. Bolton note, disparaging the president, saying he is so full of shit. A month later, Mr. Bolton writes, Mr. Pompeo dismissed the president's North Korea diplomacy, declaring that there was zero probability of success. Well, again, even that, okay, so Pompeo disagrees. I, I, I hate to find myself def defending Trump so much, but... Uh, it was a. It was if, if your publicity stunt is peace and diplomacy, as opposed to war and hatred. I'm gonna say, yeah, like yeah, it's still, it, that's a good message. You're doing. You're, you're like Trump. If even if you want to say Trump's North Korea, and I praised him at the time too. If all of Trump's North Korean outreach was a pure propaganda stunt, or you know, their the, the publicity stunt that had no possibility of immediate diplomatic change. I still support it because what because what is what's the point of it? It's to set up the real uh, manifestation of that message later. So if, if he were to do, you know, a publicity stunt, that's the opposite. Like you haven't seen Trump, for example, what would be what would be like the opposite of that? Trump going to the Mexican border wall. And shoving, you know, a Mexican off the fence or or, you know, telling them the president of Mexico to keep like that would you know to keep out and and you know instead he, he Trump still maintains for all of his nationalism and division and 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 you know racist dog whistling and yeah I'm not denying any of that it's not um his attitude about Mexicans is still we want to welcome you legally on the surface it's still anti-racist which is nice right it's progress as opposed to overt racism and he didn't go with that message that he used to get himself elected. He went with peace with North Korea. And I'm still going to say that's what I, I care way more about that than him knowing if Finland is part of Russia, like as a libertarian, as, 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 as a peacemonger. You know, and I do respect that that Trump uh, represents a continuation of the de-escalation of militarism overall. He's, you know. He, very subjective and well there's some pretty objective things you can look at how many troops are deployed how, is it, how much military spending are the trends in these things are they affected by this people dying as a result of american foreign policy pretty sure that that's still down on the whole under trump jim yeah, I, pretty sure. that this is like a really important thing and i want i want people to be able to question me on this and, and and with comprehensive statistical analysis, we could say decisively, but on the whole, because you, you got to include, you know, who do you include in this? Who is dying around the world as a result of American foreign policy? Like, do you include the economic manipulation? No, I'm just, just military, American military foreign policy. How many people are dying as a result of that? Now, are way more people dying because of arms and manipulation? I don't think there's a huge surge. I think that's still on the whole coming down. So, what is being exam exposed here that, that should be exposed is the abuse of power in this. And so the, the last quote I'll share here um, from from Bolton, uh, a couple of points here, just giving ahead in the article. Um, oh, and, and the other big thing is that uh, Trump was asking for favors from China. So I, we'll skip ahead in the article here. Mr. Bolton, however, had nothing uh, for scorn, but I think this should read, but scorn for the De House Democrats who impeached Mr. Trump, saying they committed impeachment malpractice by limiting their inquiry to the Ukraine matter, moving too quickly for their own political reasons. Instead, he said 
They should have looked at how Mr. Trump was willing to intervene in investigations into companies like Turkey's Hulk Bank to curry favor with President Erdogan or Turkey of Turkey or China's ZTE to favor Mr. Z. Uh, Mr. Trump married politics with policy during a meeting with Mr. Z, uh, Z on the sidelines of the Group of 20 Summit meeting in Osaka, Japan last summer, according to the book. Mr. Xi told Mr. Trump that unnamed political figures in the United States were trying to spark a new Cold War with China. Trump immediately assumed he meant the, de- so the now the quote from Bolton. Trump immediately assumed Xi meant the Democrats. Trump said approvingly that there was great hostility among the Democrats. He then stunningly turned the conversation to the coming U.S. presidential election, alluding to China's economic capability to affect the ongoing campaigns pleading with him to ensure he'd win. Mr. Bolton says he would have printed Mr. Trump's exact words, but the government's pre-publication review process has decided otherwise. Mr. Bolton does not say these are necessarily impeachable offenses and adds that he does not know everything that happened with regard to all of these episodes, but he reported them to Mr. Barr and Pat A. Cipollone, the White House counsel. That's definitely a mispronunciation. They should have been investigated by the House, he said, and at the very least suggested abuses of a president's duty to put the nation's interests ahead of his own. Quote, a president may not misuse the national government's legitimate powers by defining his own personal interests as synonymous with the national interest or by inventing pretexts to mask the pursuit of personal interest under the guise of national interest, Mr. Bolton writes. Had the House not focused Solely on the Ukraine aspects of Trump's confusion of his own, of his personal interests, he adds, then, quote, there might have been a greater chance to persuade others that high crimes and misdemeanors had been perpetrated. Now, I'm tempted, like, I understand why some people are still Trumplicans, Trumpaloompas. Trump apologists of one kind or another, because there's this, the 40 chess argument here is is a natural fantasy that even occurs to me here. Like, let's say you're Donald Trump and one of your goals is truly well-intentioned to become president in order to expose the fundamental criminality of the presidency. You just kind of do what you can to make things better in your flavor and keep doing all of these things. Like, and I'm thinking maybe him, my little fantasy, and I know this is absurd. I know this is absurd, but I couldn't stop this fantasy from popping into my head that maybe this is all a plan. This is part of Trump's 40 chess. That he really set it up with Bolton from the beginning. He brought about brought in Bolton was like, listen, dude, you want to make some history? Okay, look, I know there's a part of you that's a principled, legit dude who wants to challenge the power of the presidency. Or maybe, maybe think about this. Bolton at this point wants his legacy to be about something more than the neocon servant of the Bush administration, right? He wants revenge against the jocks like W, who he was the loyal beta male nerd for, and go, oh yeah, well, I'm going to make my historical mark in China, and I'm going to put the presidency itself in its place. Yeah, let's do it, Trump. I'll be your sucker for Do you see where I'm going with this? Yeah. There's all a setup, and Trump's Trump's gonna let himself be impeached or or somehow come out and be like, Well, hey, if you don't want me to do this, how about these reforms of the presidential power? And let it happen, and then or or let himself be impeached and come out and be like and reveal some document. There's gonna be some grand reveal, and he's gonna go, ha, see, meant to do that. You're welcome. Mic drop. I'm 75 years old, 74 now, but like you know, next year. I'm 75 and I'm out of here. Now I'm gonna retire into the 
golden era of Trumpian America and fade into the sun. This, okay, so this, this is what I would have been doing, I guess, if I didn't have my own grander vision. Is this plausible? Someone tell me I'm crazy that this is that that's like not it's not right because you know and maybe this would explain the Streisand effect to the next story from Yahoo.com from the LA Times Trump administration seeks restraining order <clears throat> to block Bolton book federal prosecutors are weighing whether to criminally charge John Bolton with disclosing classified information in his upcoming White House memoir in the Justice Department late Wednesday, ramped up its legal campaign by seeking a temporary restraining order to block publication of a book that is being billed as a scathing rebuke of President Trump, according to court documents and people familiar with the matter. But it's it's already out. Like how are they, how are they going to? There's so much more to this story, and for all your fantasies, you know it's it's all the more important to be able to step back and see the bigger picture and not get sucked in to the drama and the intrigue and the personalities uh, you know, as if they matter more than they do. So our next story from UPI.com, Clyde Hughes and Daniel Haynes, Trump outlines goals of task force to stop veteran suicide. Let's see if this is something worthwhile. June 17, President Donald Trump on Wednesday unveiled his administration's plan to reduce suicide among U.S. veterans, whom he described as the country's most treasured heroes. He discussed the president's roadmap to empower veterans and end the national tragedy of suicide or prevents. It's a nice, just good government acronym, right? President's roadmap to empower veterans and end the national tragedy of suicide prevents, right? With honor and courage, these incredible patriots performed their duty to America, and now we must fulfill our duty, Trump said. He described the suicide rate among veterans as a tremendous, tremendous problem. They've been through so much, and it's such a deep-seated problem. White House officials outlined nine priorities and ten recommendations for the Prevents Task Force with reporters early Wednesday. The task force was part of an executive order last year. Its primary goal is to unite government agencies and nonprofit organizations on the issue. This is the first nationally focused effort on suicide, one senior White House official said. The executive order was written intentionally as an aspirational effort. We can prevent suicides. In order to get there, we have to do a lot of things. Now, uh, let's see, where where is the list? Do I have it in this? Um, no, where, are, oh my gosh, I thought it was going to be in the story. Did they just like write this out? Um, they have some of the recommendations here. I want to see the actual list. Let's see. Nine priorities and ten recommendations. But I want I want to pull this up. Let's see. Where Where is it? I'm at, I'm at whitehouse.gov now. And apparently there should be something here. Let's see. Do we go search? What's the uh, press releases, news, briefings, and statements? Let's. Okay. While we're here, what's on the top of the pile of briefings and statements at WhiteHouse.gov? Read out from the vice presidents and second ladies call to NASA astronauts aboard the International Space Station. Uh, here we go. Second one remarked by President Trump at announcement of. Uh, prevents task force roadmap press briefing in the next one. Uh, press briefing, text of a letter to the from the president to the speaker of the house. Anyway, all right. So let's look at the remarks here. See if it actually has uh, the the nine points and uh, the ten. Uh, See, so it has the questions here and the statement. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see, control of nine innocent, no, let's see, 90%, 90%. Uh, was it recommendations? No. Initiatives? There's one of that, let's see. But it's, it prevents, 
Let's see. Prevent is like the name of it. Right. So, so this it here. Prevents task force roadmap. We gotta find the original thing that actually has no link to it. Principal prevents task force. I want I want to see this. I want to what I want to look at is like how I mean this is one way or another, this is great news. So this is coming up at this level and they're facing it head on. What I want to find out, okay, so, oh, executive order. It's got to be in the executive order establishing prevents task force. So let's let's see if we can find the executive order itself. Fun little sidebar here. Um, yeah, whitehouse.gov, executive order on national roadmaps and power systems. So section one, purpose. Section three, okay, so it has people who are in it, the Secretary of Defense, Secretary of Labor, they won't be there personally, they'll probably send representatives. Um, it's got all these sections, but let's see, where do we get the actual... Okay, so here we have uh, a couple points. Where's where's the nine and the ten? Is this... Is this... Why do they make this so difficult? Yeah, right. General... All right. Well, let's just read through the the executive order. We'll get to, we'll see we'll skip parts that are the fluff. By the authority vested in me as president by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America, it is hereby ordered as follows: Section one, purpose. On average, twenty service members and veterans die by suicide each day. As a nation, we must do better. Okay, this is the fluff part. <clears throat> Answer this call to reduce. Da -da -da, must work side by side. So, like one of the things I'm looking for is if this includes drug war reform, right? If this includes allowing uh, exploration or use of psilocybin and MDMA and treatment of PTSD. And if it doesn't, I'm going to say that this is a, we're doing the least possible to satisfy the pressure on us and, and maintain our racket. And if that's the case, it's still a good thing. It's still great. This is this is not, but it's important to understand what the victory is, right? That's why that's why I want to get into it at this detailed level before we skim through twenty more headlines in the next forty minutes. Um, so this is established to include the following. Uh, what it actually says here: the following or officials or their designees, right? Additional and invitees, development of the roadmap. Um, so the roadmap shall include. Community integration and collaboration proposal described in section six of this order to better coordinate and align existing efforts and services for veterans and promote their overall quality of life. Pretty vague sections, advanced efforts. Uh, there's, I'm like looking for anything specific. Implementation of strategy policy changes. Okay, so I'm developing the roadmap. Okay, so now I'm like looking for anything specific at all. Private healthcare and hospital systems. Okay, wait, wait, so. Engage with private healthcare and hospital systems and state, local. Oh my! Oh my gosh! Uh, state and local within 365 days of this order shall sum, the force shall submit a legislative proposal. Community integration, bring together veterans serving organizations to provide veterans with better coordinated, streamlined access to a multitude of services. So this sounds like a layer of government to make the layers of government easier to manage the layers of government, right? Mm -hmm. So far, I'm not I'm not really encouraged. Promoting a stronger sense of belonging, pretty vague. National research strategy to improve coordination, very vague. Uh, I'm, ooh, yeah, I'm not encouraged by this. The national research status milestones. Improve our ability to identify individual veterans and groups at risk of suicide. Improve interventions, develop strategies. Uh, draw upon data, technology. Wow, like this is really, really vague. Administrative provisions. Wow, they actually, wow, termination after submission of the roadmap. So there is a section for termination of the task force after submission of the roadmap described in section five of this order. The task force established in section three of this order shall monitor implementation of the roadmap the task force shall terminate two years following the submission to the president of the roadmap shit 
I'm really disappointed. Jim, I was actually hoping there would be some some meat on these bones. Uh, so far, it seems like really nothing more than, than pandering.